Hi, this is Pat Moorhead, and we are here live and on the road at Qualcomm Snapdragon Summit here in Maui. Somebody had to come on the team, so it might as well have been me, and I'm here with my awesome co-host, Daniel Newman. Look at us. We're kind of on the beach, kind of not. Yeah, we're, we didn't do the dress code right, but we had uh, CEO Cristiano Amon came out in his Hawaiian shirt and kind of showed us how it's done. I know. So you, yeah, that's a confidence move, by the way. Um, you know, in, in all serious, though, uh, this is a lot of fun. Now, for everyone out there that's been watching all our videos, I think they've gotten the hint. We're in Maui, and yes. we brag about it on every video. Because, you know, we know how the world works, right? Not everybody watches all the videos. We need to remind them each and every time. Today, we got Don McGuire, the Chief Marketing Officer here at Qualcomm. Super excited to have you here. Don, it's been a while. How are you? It's been a while. Yeah, um, it's I'm great. This is, uh, you know, the Snapdragon Summit, man. It's the pinnacle of the year for us. So excited to be here on Maui again, uh, COVID free and uh, things pretty normal and excited to see you guys. Yeah, so let's kick it off. Um, you know, I remember listening to you kind of as you sent it into this role, talking about this objective of turning Qualcomm into a consumer facing brand. I mean, it's a big week, a lot of announcements, but how have you had so much success moving the Snapdragon brand forward and concurrently winning with consumers? Uh, yeah, it's a great question. So for, for Snapdragon, um, it all started with separating the two brands, right? So we made that decision about, oh, back to about six months before I became CMO. Yeah. Um, and that was something Cristiano and I have talked about really literally for years. Um, we didn't, we never believed they belonged together. Um, actually, uh, it was really hard for them to work together. They, they actually didn't work together as brands, believe it or not. It was really difficult for our partners to use um, and talk about um, in advertising and in co-marketing. Um, the Snapdragon brand had already enjoyed its a standalone sort of ascension in, in certain markets in Asia. And then when we kind of lobbed Snap, uh, Qualcomm on top of it, it sort of created confusion. So, um, so separating the brands was step one. And then once we did that, we started on a positioning journey for the Snapdragon brand um, as, a, as a first step. And then we kind of held Qualcomm back for a while and, and then we started it on its own journey. But for Snapdragon, we started um, uh, working with, with our audiences, tech, influ tech, tech influencers, enthusiasts, our Snapdragon insiders around the world. We did research, quantitative and qualitative, and to say what does Snapdragon stand for? What should it stand for? Um, and how do we express the brand now that it's by itself again? And uh, we got a lot of great feedback from consumers around the world, and that started us off on the positioning of the brand, which we're gonna introduce an evolution of that here at Snapdragon Summit. Um, so that's kind of the evolution of the brand. But from a perspective of building it with consumers, um, you know, we started out in China uh, with Snapdragon. I mean, the whole brand, the name, the color, the fireball, all was purposefully built, right? to start in that in, in the Asian marketplace and then expand outward. So, you know, in China, we, we have 87% 80, total brand awareness uh, for Snapdragon in China. It's one of the highest consumer brand awarenesses of any product line or any brand in China. Um, in India, it's 82. In Southeast Asia, it's 84. Um, and we're growing it now in Latin America and around the world, uh, including in Europe and in the US. So we're, we're well on our way. Yeah, it's really impressive what you've been able to do, particularly where you've been focused. And it's interesting, an American-based company, uh, kind of knowing and being mature about where they need, because you know, I've happened to have tracked for the last 30 years to see how processor companies do this, and they always start in the US, and then they, they, they go out, right? So it's, it's, it's very unique, and that 87% is an astounding uh, number, and congratulations. Now, there's awareness, there's familiarity, there's action. So taking them all the way down the curve right. kind of gets to this week, right? Big announcement this week, Snapdragon A Gen 2. Yep. How is the community reacting to the announcement? Uh, lots of anticipation. Um, you know, n nothing's ever secret in this industry, right? Leaks always always come out ahead of time, um, which is which is okay because you know. As they say, there's no such thing as bad PR, I guess. Um, uh, but there's been lots of anticipation. We've seen lots of chats. We've seen lots of people tweeting about it. They're excited about the improvements, uh, the evolution of the platform. Um, this HN2 is a monumental improvement um, over HN1 and even a significant improvement over, H improvement over HN1+. Plus. And a 40x AI improvement. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. So the team, is, the engineering team has been working really, really hard. And this is a leap forward. I mean, this when you see the performance metrics that we've seen, um, both internally and even externally through Antutu and others, um, it's pretty impressive that HN2 is going to blow everything else out of the water. Um, and you know, 
Uh, imitation is the best form of flattery, so uh, we see what's going on with our competitors out there and bring it on. And yeah. uh, we're just excited to be here uh, a little early this year announcing HN2. But the AI performance, camera, gaming, even connectivity and some of the other you know, table stake features right. have all improved significantly. Well, Don, one of the biggest differentiators that I see is you're not, you're not a company that A, what you put on the slides is what you deliver, right. okay? And you don't just show up with a bag of parts. Right. You, you have hardware, you have software, you do all the ecosystem work down the line. So I can pretty much bank what you announce in either November and December, eh, probably gonna see around March or April or something like that. Uh, and, and it happens to correspond with what you actually said it would be. I don't see your competitors doing that now, so I'm actually feeling pretty good that your premium and your premium Snapdragon uh, strategy is going to work for another year. Because, quite frankly, all I've seen is more designs move your way. You've made a huge investment in it, and you can't do this without marketing. That's I right. know the engineers love to think that <laughs> you know. Build it, put, and they will put, come. Put a good product yeah, out there, right. and it's just going to fly off the shelves. Well, it's a little bit harder than that because if you don't surface what's special, what's new, what actually um, connects with the buyer, uh, you're just it's going to sit on the shelf. Yeah. Well, on one side, uh, from a consumer perspective, we're now experience led. Like we don't talk about speeds and feeds. We don't talk about tech specs. We talk about what is this? What is this? tiny platform inside of this amazing device going to do for me? Right. Why is my camera experience so much better? Why is my gaming experience so much faster? Why is my sound amazing, right? And that's what the platform delivers, is these experiences. That's on one side. On the other side, competition is tough. It's fierce. It's never been fiercer, yes. especially in this category. And we're entering new categories with Snapdragon that we're not the incumbent, that we're not the leader. So we're building and we're the underdog. Um, you know, automotive, we were not an incumbent in automotive, um, and PC. Right. Right, so we're in, in some cases we're, we're maintaining and building on our leadership, and in other cases we're entering new markets, um, which is quite a different exercise. But the power of brand cannot be underestimated in highly competitive markets, because oftentimes it's the thing that actually gives you the edge. Um, and it, when I heard our finance team say that to me one day, like the thing that's keeping us in the game, <laughs> right, was, is our brand in a lot of ways? I was like, right on. So everyone's starting to get it. You know, this is a company that's been rooted in engineering, um, but it's great to have Cristiano as a partner on this journey because he believes in the power of marketing, and so it's been fun. Did you have them write that down, create like a quote, <laughs> put it on your wall? Came and you spoke know, at my all hands I mean, and said it. I mean, <laughs> you know, the CMO has often been under the most pressure just because a lot of times, especially in B2B type of industries or, or the way you're kind of, and you actually kind of reinvented. You're like, no, we're going to go to the end customer. And I was like, ooh, that's hard. Like, let's not do that. You know, we've got all our OEMs, we've got our partners. Let's just push things through the channel. And you, you made a bold risk. In fact, uh, we were, um, you know, in your paddock club at the uh, F1. So, you know, you've been expanding partnerships, putting your name on on Formula One cars. Um, you've been partnering with with Manchester United. I mean, talk a little bit about this partner strategy because, again, it kind of fits that brand strategy. Like, okay, is this really money well spent? But it yeah. seems like. It is, or you're starting to see that it's going to be a good thing long term. Yeah, we're we're starting to see great results. First of all, I I'm never going to have the budgets to go do a bunch of like traditional advertising, right? And nor should we. Um, I think that would be sort of a waste of money. You'll get big reach and frequency, but you're not going to get moved down the funnel to your earlier point, Pat. Uh, but these partnerships um, that are very very strategically thought through, um, f and, and and have to deliver on certain objectives, right? First of all. I'm not interested in just slapping my logo on something for the sake of slapping my logo on something, right? These have to have, there has to be business relationships there. Um, there has to be technology integration opportunities for us to help that partner, right? Digitally transform themselves or, or, or their team or their entity or their campus or their stadium or whatever that might be. And then the, the brand building opportunities for Snapdragon for that category and align with that category, whether it's, hey, we're gonna be able to scale insiders faster by partnering with this with this entity, or hey, we're gonna be able to move our technology story faster. All these objectives have to be met. So we've, we've very, very strategically chosen the partners that we have, from Scuderia Ferrari, to Manchester United, to ESL and our Snapdragon Pro Series mobile esports competition. All these are very purposeful, and it's not about having a big bucket of money that I can just go throw, throw my logo on something, right? I'm not Coca-Cola, I can't do that. So it's really about bringing what we call branded technology partnerships into the marketing mix, um, where, we're, where we're not going to be more traditional as some brands would be in spending a bunch of money on TV advertising, for example. Yeah. 
Yeah, so Don, uh, I want to thank you so much for joining us here at the Snapdragon Summit uh, 2022 in Maui, Pat. Wow. It's, it's always fun to chat to him. And, and as a couple of Formula One guys, I, I do have to say that, uh, that, that I liked that they jumped in with uh, Ferrari. How about you? Oh, I mean, are you kidding me? It's the, uh, like I said, it's the only uh, ticket I beg for, so. Yeah, well, it was a great time, and thanks for having Who us. Who do you like in Abu Dhabi? Sorry? Who do you like in Abu Dhabi? I mean, with Mercedes, it, with Mercedes going one, two, and uh, it, it is shocking. Brazil. The competition is is amazing, yeah. and I mean, I'd like, I'd like to see. I mean, Max doesn't need to win anymore and take any big risks. I'd like to see Ferrari and Mercedes kind of put it put it in there in Abu Dhabi. Me too. Yeah, little edge on Ferrari. Yeah, but, well, I think for a lot of good reasons you might pick Ferrari. I'll just, I'll say Charles. That's going to be my go. bet Charles. for next he week. Does. And obviously, I'm being a good sport for that we have Don here. But uh, <laughs> right. you know, Don, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for hey, having everyone, me. thanks so much for tuning in to this episode. And if you liked what you saw here, don't only hit that subscribe button, but join us for the other eight episodes. We did nine, and this Snapdragon Summit had a ton of good launches, surprises, technology, and all these conversations brought something a little bit different. So for Patrick, for myself. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you all later.